today is July 20th, 2023, and I would like to bring you this day in history. Two girls for every boy, with the immortal opening line from Jan and Dean's Surf City, the song that reached the top of the U.S. pop charts on July 20th, 1963. It was a claim that wasn't actually supported by the facts, but it helped create a popular image of California as a paradise of sun and sand and endless summers. To anyone with just a passing familiarity with the 1960s pop music, Surf City might easily be mistaken for a Beach Boys record though in fact the beach boys had yet to have a number one of their own when jan and dean scored theirs on this day in 1963. still surf city owes its existence directly to the beach boys and their resident genius brian wilson high school classmates jan barry and dean torrance earned a pair of minor hits while still in their teens including baby talk number 10 in 1959 and that beach boy mike love would later credit as an inspiration for his group's 1961 debut surfing but by 1962 the direction of influence between the two groups had shifted Jan and Dean's doo-wop favored sound was passing out of fashion when the duo met the Beach Boys while appearing on the same bill at a Los Angeles record hop. They heard the sound that would reinvigorate their career. They became good friends with Beach Boys and with Brian Wilson in particular and then they asked Wilson if they could record one of his songs. He declined and gave Jan and Dean their first choice and then unrecorded Surf and Safari, but he didn't give them the instrumental track and the opening line to Surf City. In a year that also in a year that also saw the debut of Annette Funicello's Frankie Avalon's Beach Party movie franchise, Surf City became the first chart-topping surf song ever. Jen and Dean would go on to have four more significant surf hits in their career. Honolulu Lulu, number 11 in 1963, Drag City, number 10 in 1963, Dead Man Curves, Curve, number 8 in 1964, and The Little Old Lady from Pasadena, number 3 in 1964. Now I'd like to bring you another This Day in History. On July 20th, 1969, President Richard Nixon, along with millions of others, watched as two American astronauts walked on the moon. Later that evening, Nixon recorded succinctly in his diary, the president held an interplanetary conversation with Apollo 11 astronaut Neil Armstrong and Edward Aldrin on the moon. America and the Soviet Union had been in a race to see who could get to the moon first ever since the Soviets beat the U.S. into manned space flight with Yuri Gagarin's orbital flight in 1961. Later that year, then-President John F. Kennedy vowed that America would be the first to put a man on the moon, saying, to be sure, we are behind and we will be behind for some time in a manned flight. 
but we do not intend to stay behind. And in this decade, we shall make up and move ahead. To meet this goal, Kennedy and his successor, Lyndon B. Johnson and Richard Nixon, authorized generous funding for space exploration. Thanks to this support, less than a decade after what became known as Kennedy's moon speech, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, sent the first man to the moon. Nixon joined approximately 5 million people around the world in watching Armstrong and Aldrin as they as the astronauts left their lunar landing module and walked on the moon. The Soviet Union and China, America's two biggest rivals in the space race, banded the broadcast in their respective countries. After they planted an American flag on the moon's surface, the astronauts spoke directly to President Nixon who congratulated them on their historic mission. His phone was linked via satellite through the NASA Control Center in Houston, Texas. Nixon continued to be an influential force in America's space program. In 1972, he approved development of space shuttle program. In an iconic twist by the 21st century, space shuttle flights, especially those to the International Space Station, had become internationally cooperative endeavors with Russia's and the Americans, joining forces to conduct missions and sharing space exploration technology. Now I'd like to bring you yet another This Day in History. On the seventh anniversary of Apollo 11 lunar landing, the Viking One lander, an unnamed U.S. planetary probe, successfully lands on the surface of Mars. Viking One was launched on August 20, 1975, and arrived at Mars on June 19, 19. 76. The first month of orbit was devoted to imaging and to imaging the surface to find appropriate landing sites. On July 20th, 1976, the Viking 1 lander separated from the orbiter, touched down on the Sice Planeta region of Mars and sent back the first close-up photographs of the rust-colored Martian surface. In September 1976, the Viking 2 launched only three weeks after the Viking 1 entered orbit around Mars, where it assisted Viking 1 in imaging and surface and also sent down a lander. During the dual Viking missions, the two orbiters imaged the entire surface of Mars at a resolution of 150 to 300 meters, and the two landers sent back more than 1,400 images of the planet's surface. I want to thank you for watching today, and as always, stay safe and stay blessed. And remember to smile, because I love you, but more importantly, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ loves you the most. And if you like this video, would you please give it a and comment down below. That really helps my channel, but what really helps my channel is if you subscribe. Yeah, it's free. It doesn't cost a thing. You just push that all notification bell, and you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. Come on over and be a serendipity subby. Alright everybody, have a blessed day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye everybody!